21 victory? Well, they, they were, Todd, and we, uh, we let them jump on top of us uh, big uh, early on. Uh, in the third quarter, we came out after only trailing 10 to 6 at half and inconsistent on offense, uh, but hanging in there. Uh, we turned the ball over three straight possessions, and uh, uh, we kind of opened up the door for disaster uh, in, in a big way. Uh, they took advantage of that. We came back, had another opportunity to, to win the game uh, with a late uh, drive, and on the 19-yard line, first and, and 10, uh, turn it over again with, with no help from Hawaii. We do it to ourselves with a, with a bad center quarterback exchange, and uh, basically that was the end of the game for us. Well, the Ducks won the toss of the coin and elected, as they normally do, to defer their decision until the second half. Hawaii decided to take the football, and so the Ducks will be kicking it off. A little bit of a uh, breeze at your back, uh, but also coming across the field as well. And Hawaii with the first possession. Tommy Thompson to Derek Branch, and uh, good coverage as uh, Alex Molden and Jeremy Asher get in there to make the stop. Two redshirt freshmen uh, getting their first tackle in uh, college football. Here's Jasper rolling out. It gains about 15 uh, yards with the personal foul that's tacked on, plus the eight on the gain. This is the first offensive possession of the game for Hawaii. Ernest Jones ran him down from the backside. That uh, seemed to be about our best bet to get the quarterback on the option, but uh, we didn't do it often enough. And here comes a big play. Uh, Jasper goes up top. Uh, Mingo's there. Actually got his hand on the ball, but uh, their receiver went up strong and pulled it right out of uh, his hand. So on the first possession, the rainbow go 83 yards in six plays for the score. Now your first offensive possession. Come out with a little play pass fake and hit Derek Detweiler for an 18-yard gain just before he steps out of bounds. Look at it again. Derek's at the bottom of your screen. We're running the play fake up top. O'Neal turns to the bottom and uh, throws the catch is Derek just before he steps out of bounds. So a gain of 18 and a first down. The ball is now out to the 44. Burwell gets about four. Basically, that was the same play that we ran the play fake off of. Here's a quick screen out to Derek Detweiler. Gets a good block from Burwell, and he picks up a, a first down. And it looks like we're in sync and going to respond to Hawaii's opening drive. But uh, we stall down here later, as we'll see. Uh, you see a nice block by Burwell out in front of uh, Derek Detweiler, and he uses his speed and squirts through and picks up some extra yardage. Very good uh, after he catches the ball, doesn't he? He has great quickness, and he uh, does a good job. We had a receiver open, but the ball is batted down, uh, as you mentioned, uh, by uh, the big tall guy, six foot five, and uh, Tommy misses that field goal that went clear up in the seats uh, just a little bit left. And here they come back, and uh, Jeff Cummins on the uh, sack loss of two. see the play on the replay. Jeff is playing what we call an easy. He takes, he has quarterback responsibility uh, when it looks like he's going to take the, uh, the fullback. And uh, that worked uh, some of the time for us. Uh, we probably should have used it a little bit more. Jasper to throw downfield, slips a little, and Alex Molden in his first career start with the interception. He's a little upset. He slipped too. Uh, we get good pressure on this, though. Uh, Rodriguez coming on the blitz, avoids the block, but forces Jasper outside, and we get uh, good pressure up in his face, and Molden slips. Otherwise, I think he would have had a pretty good long return there. He said he uh, was anxious to play the first game, although not necessarily nervous. Here comes Burwell, and he picks up eight yards. And after picking uh, an incomplete pass, it's a third down and two. Good effort by Sean to get the first down. Good run there. Uh, pretty good blocking on the corner. Here, uh, unfortunately, Juan Shedrick turns a, a blocker loose. He tripped. O'Neal and him collided on their feet and tripped, and we get a sack. And here, Danny does, a, uh, I would say, a, a uh, not a very intelligent thing by trying to avoid the sack by swinging the ball over the defender, and it's batted out of his hand. Here comes Jasper, he gets 12, and now a key play here because it's 7-0 Hawaii. They're going in for what looks like another score. They give it to the fullback. The ball is stripped loose. What's the rule here, Coach? Well, this rule changed two years ago. Uh, it used to be when the ball is fumbled by the offense, 
in and out of the end zone uh, or uh, in, in that regard that it, it's the defense's ball on the 20 yard line but this ball as you can see is fumbled just prior to him getting to the goal line uh, they, they rule Hawaii does not have possession before sliding out of bounds here and two years ago they changed that rule to the uh, you get it back at the point of the fumble, which was the one yard line. So the good news is you have the football, the bad yes. news is you've got it at your own one. one. There was a very, very, very late hit. Very late hit, very dangerous. Uh, could have lost uh, a player there when they're, he's clearly four or five yards out of bounds. And, uh, and he's let up. And he's let up and that's a, you know, a good time somebody could possibly get hurt. Remember what happened to Brandon Jumper uh, exactly. a couple of years ago with that same similar type of thing. Ducks uh, unable to move it, got to boot it away, and this is the kind of day Tommy Thompson had punting on football. Uh, almost too good. Look at that. The uh, ball takes the roll and into the end zone. A 55-yarder, I think, uh, his longest last year was 55 yards. So already he's back to the top form. Paul Rodriguez coming uh, on the blitz. Uh, Cummings forcing Jasper White, and Rodriguez gets the sack here. Uh, sprint out pass. They're coming to trying to roll out. You see Cummings does a good job playing off the blocks. Uh, stripping everything clean for Paul to come up and force Jasper out of bounds. David Massey comes over to clean it up. And so a fourth down and a sad moment here for Brian Brown. He had uh, struggled in the fall camp. He had had a couple injuries there that had limited his practice time in here. You see he gets uh, twisted up in the, the right knee. I feel very badly for Brian. Uh, Brian's not had a healthy season since he's been here and he just uh, had the ultimate injury there, unfortunately, and he's been a great punt returner and a, and a solid receiver for us, and now he's uh, gone for the season. That's a shame. We wish him the best of luck and hope he has a very healthy recovery. All right, let's get into the second quarter highlights. As we get into it, Hawaii is leading 7 to nothing. Uh, we go through a couple of uh, possessions here before we pick things up with uh, Burwell and the Ducks uh, moving the football with about eight minutes to play in the second quarter. It's a good, consistent drive for you, Coach. You end up getting a touchdown. This nice uh, catch by uh, Burwell. Ball thrown a little bit behind him. He turns around and makes a nice catch. Play Just fake there to uh, Burwell and throws over the middle, and Derek makes a nice catch. Same pattern early in the first quarter. Big play. He ended up dropping a, a, a better thrown pass than this one, and this one he makes up for it by making the great leaping catch uh, to get the first down. Derek Deadweiler, gain of 16 and a first down at the Hawaii 40. Anthony Jones gets eight, plus a late hit, to now mark the ball at the Rainbow 17-yard line. Danny scrambles, gets eight. So it's second down and two from the nine-yard line. Wayne Jones gets it down, and the Ducks have a first down inside the 10. This is a second down play here. Burwell getting near the goal line. Great block by John Tattersall out there to clear the way. And then on third and goal from the one. I thought he was in from here, and then it's like, whoa, whoa I hope you get in. And yeah. he did, Derek the Deadweiler. The old uh, reverse play off the dive into the middle. Uh, everybody, uh, actually, Dan Mitchell should block this corner high. He, he comes, pulls out, and knocks the corner back out in a position because we had the thing. We could have walked across with nobody there, but. Uh, Dan actually knocked the corner back out <laughs> into pursuit of uh, Derek after he was already tooled on the play. And then the point after. A little bit of a low snap there, uh, but handled and uh, officials ruled that it was wide right. So it's seven to six, but the Ducks get their first touchdown of the season. See uh, four and a half to play in the quarter. Good kickoff coverage here. Nice high kick. Tommy got him up high into the wind. An excellent job of coverage there. Good job by Grady O'Connor making the tackle. He's a young man from Paisley, Oregon. Uh, has done a good job on the Oregon track team in the 400 meter hurdles. And uh, he's just earned a scholarship this year. He played eight man football down at Paisley. Nice tackle there back on the 11 yard line and uh, now we have one of our most disappointing moments after scoring and seemingly capturing some momentum we allow Hawaii to go down the field on us here and uh, get a field goal just before the half. Gain of 14 there. This is a first down play from the 40. 
Quarterback scramble. Jasper's an excellent athlete, good speed, and good size, too. Uh, you can see how big he is. And then on a second and 14. Draw play, and it's uh, wide open. Not very good defense. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, it's uh, one of our poorest defensive efforts uh, in a long, long time. So on the final play of the half, Jason Elam boots through the field goal. And at the half, you can see the Rainbows lead it 10 to 6. Okay, at this time uh, during the show each week, we uh, would like to get uh, some of you folks involved in the production of this show. At uh, each and every game, we'll have Walt Fox go into the uh, crowd and ask a couple of you what uh, you think should happen at halftime. What should the adjustments be? What, if you were the coach, would you be telling the team? And here's what we found out yesterday. Assign one man to the quarterback to follow him all the time. Seems like he always breaks a big hole. That's what I'd say. I'd be saying some four-letter words to him right now. They kind of fired up a little bit in the wrong way, but they're, uh, they're lackadaisical. They're not really uh, going all out, it doesn't look like. I'd tell him that they better start hitting a little harder and it really looked like a football team out there. And I'd tell them that, I would tell him that I felt that if, if Danny O'Neill couldn't quit dancing around on his feet, moving out of the pocket, that what he ought to do is put Doug Musgrave in. I would be telling the players to trust themselves, rely on what they've been taught, um, don't hesitate, and just go with the situation. Just play hard, play tough, be strong, and um, depend on themselves and not the other guy to do it. Well, Coach, uh, now that you've heard uh, those folks, are those the kinds of things that uh, you tell the team at halftime? Uh, many of them were right on. Uh, very, uh, very observant of those fans, I'd say. Uh, especially the young man who said, assign a guy to that quarterback and follow him <laughs> around on defense. Uh, and I would agree. I think we were a little lackadaisical. Uh, we were dead-legged, I would say, more than anything. Just weren't crisp. We weren't flying around like we're capable of doing. And uh, uh, I think that uh, at that point, though, I was uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, I was glad I stayed with Danny O'Neill. Yeah, I would think uh, he was a little shaky during the first uh, half at times, but he really settled down in the second half. All right, let's get into the third quarter highlights. The Ducks got the ball uh, to start the third period of play and uh, boy this next four or five minutes here was just uh, nothing seemed to go right it seemed pretty ugly i mean this is uh, very discouraging almost uh, break the, the kickoff return with derek deadweiler there uh to come out with a chance to do some things very positively and then to start this way I'd say anthony went up on a very badly thrown ball really didn't make a great effort to go after it himself but it couldn't have got it uh, and hawaii gets it we're, we're fortunate that we we get out of that one unscathed, and then Sean just, you talk about happy feet and not staying in the pocket with our quarterback. He's not, he didn't run hard enough on that one and, and get it up the field. He was dancing, always looking for the big play, and Hawaii converts that turnover into another touchdown. Uh, just a, a bad set of circumstances, two possessions, two turnovers. So with the score, as you see, is 17 to 6, but you come right back, though. You start moving the ball, and... Uh... You get good positive yardage. Uh, first of all, the draw to Shedrick gets about six. Well, I think we, we were this way in the first half as well. We That nice catch there by Ronnie Harris over the middle. That's one uh, maybe Ronnie doesn't make last year. He's uh, got to make those. He's And he's had a, a difficult uh, week or so where he's dropped a lot of balls in practice, but this has to do a lot for his confidence. Uh, we, we moved the ball. Well, a lot in the first half, but we would do something and we'd break down or Hawaii would make a real good play, and then we didn't respond. And that's kind of what happens on this drive. We're moving the ball very well, doing some great things. Sean Burwell catches the screen, takes it up the side for another first down deep in the Hawaii territory. And we've got a real good-looking offensive drive going here. You can see the replay again. Burwell slips out on the screen. O'Neill just flicks him the ball. Hawaii's in pursuit, but... Uh, Sean, again, even I took him out after this play because I, I want him to carry the football and tuck it away because that's what leads later on to turnovers. Well, speaking of tucking it away and in the wrong arm, uh, Dwayne Jones has it stripped there, unfortunately, and Hawaii recovers. And the end of another very promising, productive offensive drive by committing a turnover. And look at this sloppy, ugly tackling on this play. Uh, like I said, one of the worst defensive games we've played in a long, long time. 
First down now at the Oregon 38. Start of the pitch, uh, behind, but it uh, bounces out of bounds. Well, we weren't going to get a lot of luck in this game. We, we'd already demonstrated that, so uh, it wasn't going to stay in bounds, and it went harmlessly out of bounds. And here's the quarterback, uh, uh, the young man that said that we should assign somebody to him uh, at halftime uh, was right because they just absolutely killed us. Carter is now at quarterback. They, they catch us in our goal line defense. We miss a line on this and turn the slot back free for an easy touchdown. Now it's 24 to 6 with the extra point, and, uh, uh, and at this point, you have to feel that you've got to do something on this drive. I mean, you really have to put something together to get back in the game, and boom, right off the get-go, Neil the Deadwater for 26. And we, we spread it out. We go uh, to the four wide outs. We put what we call trips. We get three on one side, and Derek makes a little head fake outside and comes inside, and O'Neal hits him over the middle, and uh, Derek does something with after he catches it, which he's very good at. He's got great quickness. and. You know, this is Derek's first game at, at this level, and uh, he, he produced very well. He, nice run there by uh, Juan Shedrick. We almost broke that trap clean. He actually got cut up, caught up in our uh, own blocker there. And Danny scrambles here. The quick pass wasn't there, and he finds Juan Shedrick and dumps it for the first down. First and 10 at the Hawaii 35 near the end of the third quarter. And he keeps it. Gets about five. Then Danny finds Ronnie Harris, a little screen, and Harris takes it upfield, good for 11. A big, a big play there, too, Todd, for the first down to keep the drive alive. That's a, a wide screen that we had uh, used a lot last year, uh, not as effectively as we had the year before uh, with Michael McClellan, but uh, Ronnie picks up a key first down for us there. And then on second and 10, O'Neill, nice job by Christian McLemore, another redshirt freshman. Another first down. It's first and goal at the Hawaii nine. And on the next play, the Ducks find Pater. O'Neill to Harris for the score and a little high five. And that's our play of the game. Well, Todd, uh, we've got four receivers in the football game on this play. And we start Ronnie over here, uh, bring him across the formation in motion. And just as he gets next to the other receiver they both take up the field and the defensive back that comes across with him uh, doesn't know which way our players are going to break our, our wide out breaks in this way one man breaks this way and Ronnie who's coming this way and most people would expect would go on and to the outside makes a move down here after he's about five yards down the field and breaks it inside and Danny finds him wide open for the touchdown. Good job by the offensive line to give him a hole to throw through the defense there as we take a look at it from down low. See a nice, nice reception for the TD and, and now we finally do something to get the fans excited and, and uh, their excitement I think gets our players uh, from their uh, state of uh, mindlessness almost uh, into a uh, uh, an attitude of hey you know we better get going we can win this football game and sure enough you got exactly what you needed on third and four Carter drops the ball Ernest Jones recovers he was ruled it down and so you have the football in great position so uh, quarterback uh, fullback have trouble exchanging there and with the new rule you can pick it up but uh, <laughs> Ernest forgot he was already down and he started to run with it uh, after he'd already been down. Well, uh, run first, ask questions later, I guess. So on first down, we'll screen back to uh, Burwell, and he gets just enough for the first down. At the end of the third quarter, the crowd is now into it. We'll take a look at the replay. You see we're running a little flow screen coming back, and Burwell slips back out the backside, makes a nice catch, gets a good block there from Dan Mitchell to spring him. <laughs> Uh, we do a little dodgeball out there with uh, Derek Detweiler to get out of uh, Sean's way to allow him to get the first down. Derek figured he'd clean up with Dan Mitchell started. So Burwell with the first down. The Ducks uh, with that first down now are in great position to maybe score again and really tighten the, the ball game up. As we pick it up, the Ducks have it. They're deep in Hawaii territory. This is a third and nine play. Big third down conversion to Vince Ferry and a gain of 11 in the first down. This is a big play because it's third down and nine, and uh, we uh, had just thrown the same basic route and missed uh, Derek Detweiler coming across the middle, or Ronnie Harris, I'm sorry, and now we pick up Vince in the flat as they 
try to take away the slant move. And here comes uh, Sean Burwell into the end zone easily after uh, some nice blocking. And we get the uh, touchdown that brings us within striking distance. See a nice block there by Juan Chedrick, the fullback coming up and cleaning up uh, going into the end zone there. So now you go for two. Well-designed, well-executed play here. Anthony Jones is out wide to the right, comes down in motion, kind of blocks for an instant, gets lost in all the pile. You can't see him because there is a pile there. And then he just slips and goes across the field to the other side, and O'Neill hits him wide open, obviously, uh, for the uh, two-point conversion. That makes it 24-21. Now, both teams had a possession, so when we pick it up, Hawaii has the ball with about six minutes to play in their own territory. That was a second and six play. See, here's the, uh, what we call the easy, and uh, the end, instead of taking the fullback there, takes the quarterback, and they didn't read it right, and the quarterback kept it, so we made the play for a loss. Uh, nice uh, play there by Herman O'Berry, breaking up a third down pass. You can see him again. He gets uh, Cummings is coming in, trying to get pressure. Pressure by Ernest Jones from the top. But a nice play by Herman O'Berry. He almost batted it back where uh, Devon Hosey might be able to uh, pick it off. So here's the drive. We're under it's five minutes to play in the game. You need to have some points. We uh, spread uh, again. Four people wide with a single back, run a belly fake to the fullback. Good line blocking. O'Neill steps out clear and finds Burwell, who was in the slot, running out into the flat. And Sean makes a nice run here and picks up some extra yards. Uh, we started that drive uh, probably uh, 20, 25 yards deeper than we needed to after a, a penalty on a punt return, uh, which is another thing that we've got to eliminate. So Burwell gets four inside. You've got the, all your timeouts left, about four and a half to play. Burwell again uh, goes out in motion, slants, comes back in, and picks up the first down. Next play we see is a second down and 15. Anthony Jones gets uh, more than enough for the first down, gain of 19. Excellent protection on this drive. Uh, Doing a good job in the offensive line, kind of bunching the Hawaii players up in the middle as they try their stunts and loops. Uh, nice run there by Anthony after he catches the ball. Good, good pass protection in the second half. I think all the sacks were in the first half. Much better. Uh, nice run. Almost popped that run. Uh, good blocking on the perimeter by uh, Vince Ferry. Nice throw and catch there uh, for the first down. Deadweiler stays in bounds. Gain of 11. This is, uh, unfortunately, the last real good play. On the 19-yard line, first and, first and 10, uh, we're just moving the ball so well. You just you, you believe we're going to go in and score. And as you mentioned before the show, Todd, uh, we fumbled a quarterback center exchange there, but they probably wouldn't have got it had they not blitzed right into it. The linebacker was blitzing, the ball was on the ground, and he, and he beat uh, O'Neill to it. You had a couple of timeouts to use, but Hawaii was able to pick up uh, first down, actually two, and uh, run out the clock. And so there you see the final score, 24 to 21. Let's take a look at some of the final statistics. First of all, a little uh, misleading. You had 25 first downs. That's as good an offensive production as you've had uh, in a long, long time. In fact, the total offense, I believe, is the best total offense for your team since uh, last year at Texas Tech. That's Over correct. 400 yards in the passing 312. Uh, we'll talk about O'Neill in a minute. The rest of the team statistics, as we flip the page, you see the turnovers, uh, ouch. Punning, good day by both of these guys. Uh, Tommy Thompson, 47 and a half yards per punt. And on third down, another area of concern uh, last year, 10 for 16. I'm sure you'd be pleased with that uh, percentage the rest of the year as well. Individually, let's take a look. First of all, passing. Danny O'Neill, 26 of 40, a career high, 312 yards, one touchdown, and he had one interception. As far as receiving, look at that. Derek Deadweiler in his debut, eight for 104 yards, and Burwell out of the backfield also with eight and close to 100 yards. As far as rushing, Burwell limited to 66 yards in 18 attempts. Well, after the game, we went into the locker room and uh, got these reactions from the players. You know, I saw the free safety cheat up, but that just kind of excited me more because uh, the play was 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 one that we scored on twice last year, two for two for touchdowns, and uh, 
Um, when I saw the free stakes come up, and, and even if, if he would have came, I was I think I could have bought time and, and probably hit uh, AJ on the on the end, back of the end zone. And uh, uh, maybe it just excited me, and I pulled out too early. I I really don't know. I didn't expect it. You know, I thought when we started driving, you know, everybody was getting pumped and everybody was going and, you know, everything was going our way. And then something just happens and somebody snaps or somebody messes up and it causes, you know, it stops the drive. And, you know, that, that kills. It hurts a lot inside, especially because it came down to the wire. And then we ended down the game on on that note with a fumble. Turn the ball over six times a day. And that's definitely going to put a stifle on your offense a little bit. And we were always the offensive line. We all felt we were, we were pretty confident we could move these guys. I mean, I was surprised. How well we we had confidence we could move them all the time and all the, every play was working it felt like we'd taken back but we made too many mistakes and you're gonna have mistakes in the opener but we made too many to win the game what's the focus for uh, you guys you've got to get the uh, momentum back uh, everybody was excited about the opener and and you have a disappointment and now you got to gear up and, and try to win one on the road well I don't know if we can get the momentum back I think we need to get the momentum going uh, Todd uh, certainly the way we uh, came through offensively in the fourth quarter it was uh, 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 there's some hope there so we need to uh, take advantage of that and move forward we got to win a football game and uh, with this conference opener coming up uh, this is a uh, no better time to do it all righty wish you good luck next week of course uh, we'll be back next week as well with all the highlights so join us then the Oregon Sports Network brings you the Rich Brooks show Sponsored in part by Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. By Bymart. Bymart beats the high cost of living every day. By the Oregon Lottery for Oregon's economy. There's no such thing as a losing ticket. By State Farm Insurance and the State Farm agents throughout Oregon. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Gatorade. Gatorade, it's all you're thirsting for. And by Pepsi Cola Bottlers of Oregon. Pepsi, a taste that has more Oregonians saying, gotta have it. The 